Welcome to the Isuzu Diesel Truck Driver Orientation. Whether you're driving an N-Series or an FTR, you'll find these workhorses are built to be productive, versatile, and durable. Their proven Isuzu diesel engines deliver power, exceptional fuel economy, and a lower cost of ownership. Understanding your important role in operating your Isuzu truck will help maximize its productivity and reduce truck downtime or costly repairs. Here's what you'll find in this video. An overview of the diesel emission systems. A look at the instrument panel with its gauges and indicators and the multi-information display. This will help you on your daily drives to monitor the truck's operation and help you keep the truck systems running at peak performance. You'll see how the diesel particulate filter, or DPF, operates and goes through its regeneration process. The DPF is a vital component of the emission systems. So you'll need to know how the regeneration process works and your role in keeping the systems working efficiently. You'll see what the Selective Catalytic Reduction System does and how to monitor its diesel exhaust fluid, along with when and how to fill its tank. And finally, you'll see the things you need to check on a daily basis to keep your Isuzu truck DOT compliant and operating at its peak performance. Keep this video handy so you can access it whenever you need a refresher. You'll also find this video online at isuzucv.com, where you can quickly jump to any section you need. Good driving, and enjoy your Isuzu truck. An Isuzu diesel engine provides power, fuel efficiency, and great low-end torque. Its emission system helps it meet the requirements of the California Air Resources Board, the Environmental Protection Agency, and other federal statutes for clean and efficient operation. Today's modern emission systems on commercial trucks have dramatically reduced the amount of particulates and nitrogen oxides in diesel emissions over the systems used just 20 years ago. Isuzu is proud to be a part of that success. Our engines also deliver enhanced fuel economy and are proven to be dependable and durable. Isuzu engines have class-leading B10 ratings of 310,000 miles. That means 90% of Isuzu engines will still be operating normally at that mileage. The reliable and clean operation of these engines is made possible by exhaust after treatment systems located on the chassis consisting of two key components, the diesel particulate filter and the selective catalytic reduction system with its diesel exhaust fluid. When exhaust leaves the engine, it enters the diesel particulate filter or DPF. Inside the filter housing is a high-tech ceramic material that traps the fine particles of soot or black smoke often associated with diesel engines. During normal driving, this soot accumulates, so it must be burned off in a process called regeneration to prevent the ceramic material from clogging up. The regeneration process must be performed periodically to clean the filter. Depending on the conditions, the system may perform the regeneration automatically or it may require you to perform a selective regeneration. As a reminder, the system must be serviced by an authorized Isuzu dealer every 3,000 hours or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. During the regeneration process, an amber indicator in the instrument panel will illuminate to notify you the process is taking place. When regeneration occurs, exhaust gas temperatures are increased to effectively burn off accumulated soot. For more on this process, see the regeneration section of this video. After the exhaust is passed through the DPF, it enters the Selective Catalytic Reduction System, or SCR, where it is cleaned again. The SCR injects into the hot exhaust stream a precise amount of a solution called diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF. The chemical reaction in the SCR converts the exhaust into nitrogen and water, two substances that are safer for the environment. The instrument panel of your Isuzu truck will keep you informed of its operating conditions. And as a driver, it's important for you to understand the warning indicators and messages in the Multi-Information Display, or MID. Behind the driver's sun visor is a handy reference guide to help you remember the emission system's indicators and messages. You can also reference your truck's owner's manual for more in-depth information. The instrument panels in the N-Series and the FTR are similar. 
Each has an easily seen fuel gauge, tachometer, speedometer, and engine temperature gauge. The indicator lights are across the top of the gauges and in the tachometer. You're likely familiar with the shift indicator and the overdrive off indicator. The overdrive off switch is on the shifter. The seatbelt indicator, the turn signals, the daytime running light indicator, and the headlight high beam indicator are also common. And here are the cruise control indicators. This one indicates that cruise control is active, and this one lets you know that its speed has been set. The MID gives you access to a wide range of important driver information. To toggle among the screens of the MID, use the control knob on the right of the speedometer. Press it in to select an item and change the setting or display. Selecting this screen allows you to set the language. You can choose between French, Spanish, or English. To set the calendar, select this screen and press and hold in the knob until the screen begins flashing. Then set the month by turning the knob and pressing it once to set it and move to the day setting. Turn and press it to set the day and move to the year setting. Then press and hold the knob for the final setting. It will display the numerical month, day, year, and the abbreviated day of the week. To set the time, turn the control knob to select the clock screen. Press and hold in until the clock begins flashing. Turn the knob left or right to select the hour. It is linked to the AM and PM setting. Press the knob once to set the hour and move to the minute setting. Turn the knob to select the minute and press and hold the knob in to save the setting. When the headlights are on, the instrument panel's lights will illuminate. By selecting this screen, you can brighten or dim the MID. One of the most important features of the MID is its ability to display your maintenance intervals. Be sure it has been set by your authorized Isuzu dealer and is on. Then, as you drive, the system will track the mileage to that service item and notify you when you're within a thousand miles of needing the service by turning from green to amber. In the MID, you have access to an engine hour meter to monitor how long the engine's been operating. You can also view your average fuel economy, the fuel economy by trip, or the current fuel economy. You can also toggle between trip A and B information by quickly pressing this knob to the left of the odometer. To reset the trip A or B's information, be sure you have the correct trip selected. Then press and hold the knob for about two seconds and the mileage will reset to zero. Resetting trip B will also reset the trip fuel economy. Keeping track of the diesel exhaust fluid level is critical. This gauge in the MID helps you determine when it's time to refill. Another important component to keep track of is the diesel particulate filter. This gauge shows the particulate matter's accumulation level. L is for low and H is for high. When regeneration is in progress, this message appears. When regeneration is required, the MID will display an amber or red message notifying you to initiate regeneration, either automatically or selectively. The exhaust system warning message means you have an error in the selective catalytic reduction system. This could be a malfunction or the system has sensed low level of DEF or incorrect DEF quality. You'll need to have the system inspected and serviced at your authorized Isuzu dealer right away. When the exhaust system message appears, the SCR system will turn on other indicator lights and limit speed in progressive stages to encourage you to service the truck. For more information on this, see the DEF section of this video. If the water separator indicator is on, it means you need to drain water from the chassis fuel filter. The water separator helps you drain any water that may have gotten into the fuel line. For more information, see the daily driving section of this video. There are a number of other warning messages that appear in the MID. A low fuel warning, a low coolant warning, an engine overheating warning, or a low def warning, which flashes with the exhaust system warning. These are usually accompanied by an audible alarm to get your attention. The warning indicators outside the MID in the instrument panel notify the driver of system errors. When one appears, an audible alarm will sound and in some cases a message will appear in the MID. The most common and recognized indicator is the check engine indicator light. It notifies the driver that the vehicle should be inspected by an authorized Isuzu dealer. 
The reduced power light looks similar to the engine light, but has an arrow in the center that signals engine power has been reduced. It usually illuminates when the emission system is cutting engine power and is in need of attention. In cold weather, the glow plug indicator will illuminate when the ignition is turned on. It goes out when the glow plug has preheated the engine. To check your oil level from the cabin, be sure the engine is off. Press this button on the dash, and if this oil level indicator illuminates green, your oil level is OK. If the oil pressure light illuminates, it means your oil is too low. Check the oil level on the dipstick. If the light comes on while the engine is running, you will also hear an audible warning tone. Stop the vehicle immediately and call for service. Here are the transmission warning lights. If the transmission fluid light comes on while driving, it means the transmission fluid's temperature is too high. You should slow down and pull over to the side of the road. Let the engine idle and the fluid will cool down. If the light goes off, you can begin driving again. If the transmission warning light begins blinking while driving, it means you should get the transmission inspected by an authorized Isuzu dealer. The FTR has a range inhibited light that works in conjunction with the transmission warning light to notify you of transmission errors. The brake system indicator lights will come on at startup and then go off. The main brake system light signals when there is a malfunction in the braking system. Potential issues could be low brake fluid, a malfunction in the charging system, or the anti-lock brake system. If the light does not go off after cycling the engine, have your brake system checked and repaired promptly. The anti-lock brake system indicator will illuminate with the brake system light whenever there is a concern with the ABS system. The ABS may stop working, but the brakes will stay functional. The brake booster light will come on and a buzzer sound simultaneously whenever the brake booster's vacuum or pressure becomes insufficient during driving. If this occurs, do not pump the brakes. You may have to push them harder and be prepared for a longer stopping distance. If this should occur, have the vehicle serviced immediately before you continue driving. The battery discharge warning indicator will come on when the ignition is turned on and go off after the engine is started. If it comes on while the engine is running, there could be an issue with the charging system, such as a loose or broken alternator belt. The exhaust brake indicator is not associated with the service braking system. This light indicates that the exhaust brake is engaged constricting the exhaust to help slow the vehicle. Sometimes the system will make a puffing sound when the exhaust brake is engaged. Don't worry, this is part of the normal functioning of the exhaust brake. The exhaust brake is turned on by pulling the lever toward you while driving. It will engage automatically when your foot is removed from the accelerator and the truck is traveling above 3 miles per hour. It will disengage when the accelerator or brake pedal is pressed. Releasing the pedal re-engages the exhaust brake. To disengage it, push the lever forward during idling. Here's a tip. Utilizing the exhaust brake will prolong your brake pad wear. The FTR includes a full air brake system. For safety, the truck may start but not move if there is insufficient pressure in the braking system. Allow the truck to idle a few minutes to build up pressure in the system. Then it should move properly. The Service Vehicle Soon indicator illuminates to let you know that the vehicle control system needs service. As soon as possible, you should consult your Isuzu dealer for inspection or repair. For more information on the multi-information display and the warning indicators, see your truck's owner's manual. The diesel particulate filter, or DPF, is a vital component of the emission system. It consists of an oxidation catalyst that cleans the carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons from the exhaust gas. Then a high-tech ceramic filter collects the particulate matter. The DPF requires servicing at your authorized Isuzu dealer every 3,000 hours or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. And in order to keep the diesel particulate matter, or soot, from clogging the system, it must be burned off regularly in a cleaning process called regeneration. Usually it happens automatically while you're driving. You don't have to do anything. During regeneration, temperatures of exhaust gases are increased to effectively burn off accumulated soot. In the multi-information display, you can monitor the DPF's accumulated levels of particulate matter. 
This bar graph will display bars from low to high. When this amber message appears, regeneration should be performed soon. And when the message appears in red, it means the filter is full. When this happens, you have two choices. You can keep driving at a consistent speed over 30 miles per hour for a sufficient period of time to complete automatic regeneration. Or you can park the vehicle and perform a selectable regeneration. For automatic regeneration to occur, you'll need to get the truck speed up to 30 miles per hour. When the truck's speed, engine coolant temperature, and other factors are met, DPF regeneration will begin. If conditions permit, keep driving until regeneration completes, usually about 10 to 20 minutes. When regeneration is taking place, this message will appear in the MID. During regeneration, the engine idle speed will increase and the exhaust brake may activate when the vehicle is idling while stopped. If the regen in progress message is illuminated, let the system complete regeneration. If automatic regeneration is suspended, the system will resume regeneration once the necessary conditions are met. If regeneration is continually interrupted or conditions cannot be met to occur automatically, the amber or red warning indicator will illuminate. For example, if you cut off the engine, the automatic regeneration process will stop and you'll have to restart it. Interruptions can also occur if you do a lot of stop and go driving with extended idling or in extremely cold weather where the automatic regeneration can't maintain the proper conditions and temperatures to complete the process. Eventually, this indicator will illuminate and you'll have to do a selectable regeneration. To perform a selectable regeneration, park the vehicle in a safe place and engage the parking brake. With the engine running at operating temperature, press and release the DPF switch located on the dash to the right of the steering column. During the regeneration process, the system raises the exhaust gas temperature to over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit to burn off the diesel particulate matter. This means you must take certain precautions. For safety reasons, do not use the power takeoff or PTO function. Park the truck in a safe area free of flammable materials such as grass, leaves, or waste, and do not touch the DPF area to avoid injury or accident. Remember, you cannot drive the vehicle when you are performing a selectable regeneration. If you do, selectable regeneration will stop and the selectable regeneration required message will reappear. You'll need to stop and push the selectable regeneration button again to complete the process. During a selectable regeneration, do not leave the vehicle unattended. It will take roughly 20 minutes to complete, and when it is complete, the regeneration in progress message will go out and normal driving can resume. Regeneration is a simple process that needs to be performed periodically to keep the truck operating within emissions guidelines. It keeps the filter clean and prevents it from getting restricted, which can cause a lack of power, prevent the vehicle from starting, or cause damage to the DPF. So you might be wondering how often the truck needs to perform a regeneration. As a general rule, trucks driven in extreme low temperature environments will require regeneration more often. Extreme low outside temperatures can keep the system from heating up enough to clean the filter. And trucks driven continuously at a low speed or making a lot of stops over long hours can also increase the need for selectable regeneration. Remember, if you ignore the red warning messages and chimes and continue to operate the vehicle without completely regenerating the DPF, the check engine indicator light and reduced engine power indicator light will come on, initiating performance restrictions on the vehicle. If this happens, the vehicle must be serviced at an authorized Isuzu dealer. While this may seem like a lot to remember, you'll find a label attached to the sun visor that lists everything you need to know about the emission systems. You can refer to it anytime you need it. The Selective Catalytic Reduction System, or SCR, is a key component of the emission system. It uses diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, to further reduce the emissions passed to it from the DPF. For the SCR to do its job properly, it requires monitoring the DEF and periodically refilling it. In the Multi-Information Display, or MID, you can monitor the fluid level in the DEF tank. When the tank is full, you'll see four green bars. When it's down to one bar, you'll need to refill the tank. This gauge is the only accurate measurement of the tank's fluid. 
Before refilling the DEF tank, be sure the engine is off. The tank is located on the driver's side frame rail behind the cab. It will hold 4.2 gallons of DEF. There is an optional locking cap to prevent loss and contamination. This sight tube is designed to help you gauge how much DEF you're adding to the tank when refilling to prevent overfilling and spillage. This is not an accurate measurement of the tank's fluid level. For that, you need to use the DEF gauge in the MID. Some DEF containers have a dedicated spout that fits into the tank's opening. However, you may need to use a funnel. But it's critical to keep the DEF from getting contaminated. So be sure the funnel is clean and hasn't been used with oil. And if you do spill any DEF, just wash it away. It's a colorless and transparent liquid, but it can be corrosive if not washed away. Depending on the conditions, you may smell an odor. Be sure only to use DEF that is certified by the American Petroleum Institute, or API. It's available at your authorized Isuzu dealer or your service provider. Using any substance other than API certified DEF can cause costly damage to the SCR system and even more costly truck downtime. If the system runs low on DEF while you're driving, the reduced engine power and DEF indicator lights will appear, a chime will sound, and the refill DEF message will appear in the MID. Continuing to drive too long after these warning indicators have illuminated will result in a severe speed limitation to keep the truck operating within emission guidelines. Your top speed will be limited in progressive stages, starting at 55 miles an hour, then 35 miles an hour, and then 5 miles an hour, to let you know it's time to refill the DEF. Refilling the DEF should return the truck to normal operation. If the system detects a malfunction or incorrect DEF, this message will appear in the MID, and you'll need to have the system inspected and serviced at your authorized Isuzu dealer. When the exhaust system message appears, the SCR system will turn on other indicator lights and limit speed in progressive stages. If you're operating in cold weather climates, the DEF may freeze. This is normal. The vehicle can still be driven when the DEF is frozen. The system will thaw it out by circulating warm engine coolant around the system. In low temperature environments, you should not park the truck for a long period of time with a low fluid level in the DEF tank or the indicator on. This may prevent the sensor from resetting when DEF is added. See your owner's manual for more information. When storing DEF, the shelf life can vary depending on the room temperature of the storage place. Check the storage instructions on your DEF container for detailed information. For safety and to keep your Isuzu truck running at its best, be sure to perform a daily inspection before you hit the road. This will help you identify any potential issues and avoid troubles while you're driving. As you know, the Department of Transportation, or DOT, requires an annual inspection to assure commercial vehicles are in good working order. They also provide a Driver's Vehicle Inspection Report to help you log your daily inspection. It covers all the major components of the vehicle and serves as a record of the truck's condition. A good place to start is by checking your engine oil. You can do this from the cabin. Just press the oil check switch, and this indicator will illuminate green if the oil level is sufficient. Then, with the parking brake engaged, start the engine and allow it to idle for about 10 minutes. This allows the fluids to warm and circulate, so you can get good readings. Pay close attention to the warning indicators on the instrument panel to be certain which ones turn off and which may stay illuminated. Turn on the climate control so it can prep the cabin and defrost the windows if needed. Then turn on your headlights and hazard lights to be sure their indicators illuminate in the instrument panel. Leave them on for your exterior inspection. Check that your mirrors are clean and properly adjusted. While the engine is idling, take a walk around the truck. Inspect your wheels and tires. At each wheel, make sure the nuts are tightened. A loose lug nut can cause vibration and compromise handling. You'll want to check the tread. Front tires tend to wear more quickly, but check all tires for irregular wear. And you'll always want to check air pressures. The recommended pressures can be found in the owner's manual or in the driver's side door jam. Proper inflation is important for good handling and good fuel economy. On the FTR, check the brake system air tanks for condensation by pulling the release valve cable. The primary tank is near the rear passenger side wheels. 
The second area is near the front driver's side wheels. Then walk around the truck and check your lights to be sure they're operating correctly. Check any locks or latches on your cargo and always check for any leaks under the truck. On the passenger side, check the engine coolant reservoir. Be sure it has an adequate amount of fluid. Then open the door and check your washer fluid on the passenger side of the dash. On the FTR, this reservoir is under the hood. Also, be sure to visually inspect your wipers. By this time, your engine should be warmed up. From the driver's seat, you can quickly check your brake fluid level in the reservoir on the left side of the instrument panel and test the pedal to make sure it has proper play in it. Then check your fuel level for any illuminated indicators or warning messages in the MID. Most important, be sure to check the DEF level and the particulate matter or PM level. Before you hit the road, take the time to turn off the engine and check the engine belts and hoses. Now be careful here. Areas surrounding the belts and hoses may be hot from running the engine. First, unlock and tilt the cab forward to get access to the engine. See that the belts and hoses are not frayed or worn. The transmission doesn't require a daily check, but it must be inspected or serviced every 10,000 miles by your dealer. Now lower the cab and lock it back into place. Behind the cab on the left frame rail is a priming pump. This is important for bleeding the fuel system to ensure the fuel pump delivers diesel fuel to the engine. If you ever run out of diesel fuel, this pump could save you from a tow. To operate it, place a container below the air bleed plug to catch any fuel. Then attach a plastic hose to the plug. Fully loosen it and operate the priming pump up and down about 20 times until the fuel no longer contains any air bubbles. Then, fully retighten the air bleed plug. Remove the hose and wipe off any fuel on the plug or surrounding area. Operate the priming pump up and down about 10 more times, then start the engine. If the engine doesn't start right away, repeat the process. When the engine starts, allow it to idle for about 5 seconds, then press the accelerator pedal and increase the engine speed for about 10 seconds. On the bottom of the fuel filter, your truck has a water separator. Its purpose is to separate any water from the fuel that may have formed in the fuel tank due to condensation. If this indicator is on, it means you need to drain water from the fuel filter. To drain the water separator, attach a plastic hose to the drain plug on the bottom of the fuel filter and direct it into a container. Loosen the plug and pump the priming pump 10 to 20 times to purge the water. Then tighten the plug and remove the hose. Now start the engine. If the engine doesn't start within 10 seconds, wait and try again. The message in the MID will go out when the engine has successfully started. Neglecting to have the fuel filter and water separator serviced can be one of the major contributors to hard starting. Be sure you're also using quality fuel from a trusted source. In cold climates, if water is permitted to accumulate in the fuel system, it will freeze and make starting the engine impossible. If you need a refresher on anything covered in this video, remember, you can access it online or on your mobile device at isuzucv.com. And you can refer to the label on the sun visor. For even more in-depth information, check your owner's manual or with your authorized Isuzu dealer. Pay attention to the emission system notifications and perform regular maintenance and your Isuzu truck will provide you and your company with years of efficient, productive transportation.